Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Opinion Machine, the show where we talk about all things gaming. My name is Killjoy, and today we're going to be taking a look at a few games, or few remasters that I would consider good remasters. Now, with all the recent stuff going on, or the couple of videos I've done myself on Warcraft 3 Reforged and Commandos 2 HD, and both of those games being pretty poor, I did do a little bit of a video on Stranger's Wrath HD which, when that came to Switch and talked about what I expect from a, a remaster. Uh, but today I want to give three examples of games that I think do remasters well. Um, they're all very different. Um, and they're going to be the Crash Insane Trilogy, the Uncharted, uh, the Nathan Drake Collection, and Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD. They're all a bit different. They're all kind of... They've got things they've gone back and done. Now, just to give you some context, like... When I hear about a game getting remastered, like I don't think the entire game's getting remade. What I think of, I think, probably going to upgrade the game so it runs on a newer system, probably at a higher resolution, probably at a higher frame rate, um, and then like, improved lighting, improved texture quality. But the big thing for a remaster is not just to do that, it's usually a chance for developers to go back and do some quality of life improvements. They could be tiny, tiny things. Could be UI changes, could be adding a UI, could be making some things more obvious, you know, adding a difficulty level, just like small things, but making the point of it being a remaster, you know, it just, it's basically like tweaking it in all the ways to be able to go back and change things and tweak it and so on. But let's let's get on in with it. Uh, let's talk about uh, Crash Insane Trilogy. Now, some people might think this is a remake, but technically the entire game was built on the original geometry of the original Crash uh, games. So it's kind of a weird one, but Let's just go through things. So first off, let's talk about the additions that were added to this game. So two extra levels, um, Stormy Ascent, which was a recreation of a level removed from the original Crash, which was a game that you could access, it was on disc, but you could it would crash, quite literally crash if you access it sometimes. And then Future Tense is an all new level for Crash Bandicoot 3. So already you're getting two new levels, or like one level that could not be, it could be accessed, but without, not without uh, hacking into the game. Uh, time Trials are uh, present in the first two, not required for good endings, but they let you do more than 100%. So now you have time trails in all three games. I think that means it was only available in the third game. Uh, crash pa Dash Power now called Speed Shoes in Crash 2 by defeating Cortex. So they've given you a power up there. Online leaderboards. This doesn't, it's, I only have the Nintendo Switch version, so that's the version I've played. But you now have online leaderboards for time trials. Um, Coco is now a, a character you can play. Um, she has her own animations. Um, Checkpoints now remember the crates you've broken, which is quite a big thing. In the original Crash, if you died when you got to a checkpoint, you would, it would not remember the crates you had broken. Uh, so that was kind of annoying. But now it does. Uh, all crates in bonus rounds now count, count towards your total in the first game, so they're required for gems like the other twos. Um, you can replay them as many times as you want since they're now accessed through the warp pads. Uh, so yeah, the warp pads now. Because of the, uh, it, the big change from the original game, for Crash Bandicoot was you collected the face tokens to access the bonus game which would allow you to save. That's not the case anymore, so now that you, you can just you collect them, I think you still collect them, but you just get on a warp pad, basically. The first two games now have a crate count, I like the third game, which is massive in my opinion. I'm letting you see if you're trying to go for a 100% run, if you've missed any. Sure, how many crates you've broken. Uh, appears at the end of each level. Uh, end of Yeah, in the first game. Uh, okay, Fake Crash now appears in a few of the levels and loading screen gives you hints. So, already this game is ad adding some extra tweaks. These are the kind of things I like. Two new levels, to be fair, is something I did not expect when the game came out. That's really cool of them, they were free. Time Trials is an extra bonus. That's cool. The new power-ups, uh, the speed shoes for the online leaderboards is really cool. Having an extra playable character is very nice. Uh, just tweaking the checkpoints and the crates and having trying to make all three games have a very you know uh, have the same UIs and have the same it's not like you're playing the games as they came out back in the day where they would have added improvements as they've gone on they've kind of um, given them all that kind of polish to that degree so alone already this is the kind of things that I expect from a remaster so with Crash and Saints Trilogy, you've got a better looking game, you've got things that are present across all three games, there's a consistency basically, um, and this shows it, and they added some small 
but they added some new content, some minor content, but it's, you know, fun extras. You don't have to pay for it. Because, to be honest, when the game came out, it was actually about, what, 30 quid? So, which was surprisingly good. It was good value. Um, now, bear in mind, I bought this. I should probably point this out. I bought this game before I started boycotting Activision. So, this is the last thing I bought that had their uh, um, stamp across it. So, they've got improvements on the game as well. So, all games now have an auto-saving feature, which massively changes... Um, especially for the first game you don't have to worry about trying to save which is cool uh, the dy dynamic difficulty adjustment from crash 2 and warped was added to the first game so this takes uh gives you um masks i believe yeah so if you die too much time you get masks um certain checkpoint uh, crates become checkpoints and boulders will slow down and stuff so it's like cool little things like that uh floor and toxic waste which is a particular level it was a level you run from the front of the screen to the back and have these bouncing uh, barrels so it makes it easier to figure out where they're going to bounce um you can see there's loads of things in here i don't want to go through every single one but like chase levels in the second game i have trailer green squares before each dash pad so wh what i'm getting at is these improvements are all things that they've done throughout the entire game to make the game better but also to help players and also just make things make more sense and to give people more of a chance because the original games are tough you know they aren't they aren't easy but you see there's all this stuff here and then there's all this level design that was changed and there's technical stuff which you know is kind of some people might not like some of the technical things they did but there is this this page goes on for so long i mean you've got the controls and physics to be unified for all three games so they all play similar um to the same there's um Where's the other one? There's one about geometry in here, um, which tells you about like how, why it's harder and stuff like. That. There's so much stuff that goes on. In it. Like, look at all this. Look at all this. Look at all these things that changed. <laughs> and then aesthetical as well. So here we go. So rather remaking the custom-made font, for example, and now uses a commercial one, except for these in the game. Um, there, there is so much stuff here. This is why I consider this to be. A very good remaster because they did go through the game and while the game primarily is the same there are so many little things that make this worth playing again yes it is a bit harder because of the way that they changed the physics um, and it's also a little bit more difficult because of crashes hitbox um, you slide off things a lot easier it is a tough game but in terms of a remaster you've got three games that look much nicer than they've ever looked all in one package for a decent price you've now an extra playable character You've now got time trials in all of them. You've got um, a nice unified UI. You've got things that help people out without being too intrusive. Uh, you know, that's that's what I kind of want. Like, I don't... I, it, it's different. If they remade the game from scratch, then I wouldn't expect all this stuff. I just expect a remade game, but it isn't. It's, it's built on foundations and geometry of the original, and then they've added a bunch of things to it. And I think this is a very good example of how a remaster should be done right. I think the Crash uh, and Saints Trilogy is a fantastic set of games. So that's example number one. This is why the reason why I wanted to do this video is to put to shame Warcraft and Commandos because it's all very well up doing, uh, you know, upgrading your models because that's obviously part of it and making it run on your systems. But if that's all you're going to do, then it's kind of pointless, and especially for the price you want to sell those games for. Like, you really need to go away. You need to make UI improvements. You need to make sure that the game, there are tweaks there and things like that. You can't really just release the same game. Now, on the Uncharted Nathan Drake collection, I have not played. I will be honest right now, I have not played it. However, I did play Uncharted 2 and 3, and I know they were very good games. And the things I've read about this seem to suggest that this is actually, they've improved the game in, in the ways it needed to be improved. So, we made it, we, you know, I, I think this is a good one because uh, I know that these games are good, but just to, here's a list of all the differences that was added uh, into it. So the game now runs, all, all three games run at 60 frames a second, and the resolution was increased to 1080p. This was PS4, so yeah, this was all the games ported to PS4. Um, we're done by Bluepoint, is that correct? Yes, who are very good at uh, doing remasters and remakes, so they, they know their stuff. Better lighting textures, models across all the games. The game does look better. Um, I haven't, like I said, I haven't played it, but I have seen gameplay. It does look better. It's got all the right tweaks. 
Uh, the game now features an extra mode called Speedrun, which I assume lets you speedrun it. There's two new difficulties being added, a very easy and a much harder one. You've got now we've got a new photo mode. Uh, more options have been added, such as the ability to remap the controls, which is a fucking fantastic thing, you know, really. Like, more games should be allow you to remap the controls. New trophies, um, new weapons, six axes motion removed. Maybe they just didn't want to... Oh, because that was only in PS3, wasn't it? And a rewards menu to Uncharted 3. And then there's a few extra little bits for each of the games. Um, and as you can see, this doesn't seem as crazy as the Crash um, trilogy. And it's not because th these games aren't as old. But the fact that they made, from what I heard, was they made the, the first game play more like the others. They updated it with certain things. Like, this is... I'm not... When, when I talk about what I expect from a remaster, a lot of it just comes down to quality of life changes by making, you know, customizable controls or letting you, you remap those, um, which, you know, to more modern standards. That's really good. Upscaling it is fine. Making it run at 60. If it was all at 30 and then into 60, that's a huge jump. That's a big quality of life change. Then adding lighting and textures and models, um, a new mode, new difficulties, photo mode, like... This is the, it's a lot of small things that make a remaster. If we were to take Warcraft Reforged again, I'm going to keep ragging on this game because it deserves to be ragged on. If that game had come out with the 40 plus hours of remastered cutscenes that they promised and the online was in a good state and had the things that should be there that they didn't take away, that's all they had to do. Upscale the models so it runs on a newer system as well. Put those new cutscenes in it. And then make sure the online stuff works, have it all in place. People would have been fine. There would not have been the backlash that there is. And these uh, remasters right now are shitting all over Warcraft Reforged. It's like, yes, you made your game look pretty, but what else did you do? In fact, you took away content. And the last game I'm going to talk about is The Legend of Zelda Wind Waker HD. Now, this is a game that I did have, and it was for the Wii U. And everyone will laugh and be like, haha, the Wii U. But this was a really, really, really good remaster um it was it improved the game if, if you've never seen wind waker like oh like that is a gorgeous gorgeous art style i can't believe how much better it looks than the gamecube one but they made it run at 1080p the original was in 480p um enhanced version of the original cell shading the soft shading so basically because there was so much more power they could make it look a little bit more realistic to a degree make it look it's like the realistic and more lighting and just it's, there was so many to do with the textures and the lighting was really the big thing that made the game look incredible but they used the enhanced models from the original version uh, which they made but then they obviously couldn't use because the game you couldn't power it so they had to scale things down so texture qualities high resolution uh, what we've got here we've got um 2d elements such as icons and hd hud are completely redrawn to match the game's promotional art um heat wave effects now added uh, reflections to the puppet gallon fight um, audio was uh, higher quality instrument samples in the original game so you, already you can see the stuff they added into this now Wind Waker is a game that's you know fairly considered a fairly high Zelda game it's kind of nuts that they went and did all this sort of stuff like but they, they really went all out with this one I mean even here we've got the uh, the Wind Waker gameplay, they did a lot for this. Uh, one of the big things in the original game that people didn't like was you had to collect eight shards. It says here, to, they shortened it to five of eight shards. So that was what? Three shards less you had to get. Uh, no, sorry, five five are now found five are now found directly without having to go through the process. So it sped up the whole process quicker, so you weren't sailing around like a, for ages. Um, which, is, which is a big thing that people didn't like in the original, and they went back and changed it. You had increased anim uh, short animations, you had stuff to do with the, the camera, you had a swift sail added to the boat that allowed you to go quicker through the sea in any direction you wanted. Hopefully, me talking about this is, is you can hear the fact that these are little things that are added, but enough to make the experience a lot more fun, in the sense that it's like not that the original game was bad, but it needed, they've gone back and tweaked it to make it a much more streamlined experience so you're not spending time, feel like you're wasting time. There is so much here I can go through. Like, oh, gameplay, like, your wallet now holds 500 rupees instead of 200, which means you don't need the upgrade to do a particular part in the game. There are extra chests added. There are pieces of hearts found in different places. Uh, there's all this stuff. All of these things. Forest water lasts for 30 minutes instead of 20. Like, you need that at one point. Like... 
there is so much stuff here that they went back and changed interface changes as well other changes like my point is these free games and there are obviously other good hd remasters out there or just remasters in general these three games represent the kind of thing that i like from a remaster and what i expect is a visual upgrade to some degree some quality of life improvements and then just just minor things maybe an extra mode maybe like some just little things i'm not expecting the game to be built from the ground up or anything like that like i'm expecting to be playing the same game but if to feel to almost run better to feel like it plays better on whatever system i'm playing it is you know obviously i've mentioned strangers wrath hd they upgraded the ui for that they made the game run at 60 frames these i mean any game that goes from 30 to 60 that's a huge jump in my opinion so that's obviously worth it but yeah like hopefully we'll see more remasters go down this road or these this road these three games where it's like here are a list of chain like obvious changes that you can see that have been going on and uh you're not having you know you're not having a half arsed or half baked experience for 30 pounds instead you're getting a, a decent game or a remaster of a game with those improvements with those visuals and like anything else they want to bring to it you know and that's that's what makes a good remaster that's what makes people happy you know so this is obviously a really hot topic now i think remasters at the moment like for the most part they're pretty good but having played two really bad ones or played commandos 2 sorry and then seeing all the stuff surrounding warcraft 3 it does definitely like be like hmm but these are three examples of really good remasters so yeah if i was going to recommend some there's there's some to buy uh, if not just look up remasters there are plenty out there which is good and it's nice because they're all on newer systems as well but uh, that's going to do it for me today then guys thank you very much for listening as and watching as, as always if you like the video hit like if you want to see more con content like this obviously hit subscribe facebook and twitter links are down below if you want to get involved over on those places and until next video i'll see you then